Welcome back to our next video. In this video, we will be chatting all things histamine and mast cells. So in this video, we'll be chatting about what mast cell activation syndrome is, um, what you can do to help with your histamine load, what an antihistamine diet looks like, all that good stuff. So we can just jump right in to what histamines look like, you know, and what that looks like for you in your lifestyle when starting bee venom therapy. So the first thing I think so, we should yeah, chat about. We should kind of start like at the beginning of where this party all started, <laughs> but it's kind of like about the mast cell. So yeah. you might hear mast cell activation syndrome and mast cells spoken a lot. Yeah, MCAS. All over, yeah, all over. Yeah. And it's kind of difficult to know what that means. And so um, basically what a, ma a mast cell is, is a type of white blood cell that regulates, releases, and directs hundreds of mast cell mediators, which are really like just signaling chemicals mm -hmm. to activate your body's inflammatory defenses in response to some sort of a perceived threat. So what happens is that these mast cells degranulate to release um, their mediators during an allergic or a pseudo allergic reaction, which can cause bro both pro and anti-inflammatory responses. So degranulation is literally the process of these mast cells releasing like whatever is stored in them. So these signal signaling chemicals. And one of the mediators that's stored in these mast cells is histamine. Um, and what happens is sometimes you have inappropriate release of mast cells or mutated um, mast cells, either from having an overproduction, which is a condition called mastocytosis, mm -hmm. or from having a normal amount of mast cells, just known as mast cell activation syndrome. And both of these conditions constitute a group of disorders under the umbrella title mast cell activation disease. And so the mast cell degranulating properties of bee venom, you know, because of that peptide, in addition to the mast cell activation syndrome that has been induced by Lyme, which is an evidence-based, you know, fact that you can look up um, and is in our handy dandy uh, research sheet, they can both cause a disproportionate amount of histamine in the body. And so when you talk about histamine, histamine is broken down by an enzyme called diamine oxidase when it's in your body. Um, and you can, again, um, look up what an enzyme is in our, in our research seat, but basically it speeds up the rate of a chemical reaction. And so it basically is in the, in the job of breaking down this histamine as, as fast as it possibly can. The problem is that there aren't a lot of definitive tests for measuring D DAO, diamine oxidase, or histamine, and it's an emerging, emerging field of research. And why that is, is because histamine fluctuates constantly in your body. Mm -hmm. And also DAO is at different levels and in different organs in your body. And how those function in regulating the amount of histamine and how that might translate to symptoms from excess histamine is really not known super well. So just the signs of MCAS, of histamine intolerance are still kind of just being figured out. But an impaired ability to break down histamine based on not enough um, DAO in your body and the resulting excess might actually cause um, these symptoms that could mimic an allergic reaction or could yeah. cause a bona fide allergic reaction. Yeah. So oftentimes before people sting, they're like, oh my gosh, like what if I'm like allergic? Or while they're stinging, they might notice like, oh, like my that one time, like tight. my throat's tight. Yeah, scratchy. And it's not necessarily because you're having an anaphylactic reaction. It's because you're having mast cell degranulation, which is which is actually the symptomology that you're facing. Yes. So that's what we mean when we say this kind of pseudo allergic seeming yeah. reaction. There is so much misconception about bee allergies and so many people think that they're allergic and it is actually so much more rare to be allergic to bees than it is to like peanuts and other things. If you can like post on Instagram or ask a friend or text a family member and say like, hey, I think I might be having anaphylaxis, going into an anaphylactic reaction, you are not. It's usually as Siri is describing like this histamine reaction in your body um, and that is why 
we recommend being on a low histamine diet. Yeah, so generally what research has shown is that symptoms can actually be more or less mitigated on a low histamine diet, mm -hmm. but each person's tolerance to histamine is just so different yeah. and it's always changing. And so how quickly your body can get rid, like break down these histamines is different. So exactly. you, don't eat, you don't, there's no concrete, like it takes two days to break yeah. down these histamines. It really depends. And so, the approach to how do I include or not include histamine really needs to be individualized and really needs to be worked on with a registered dietitian or another professional who understands these issues. And you'll hear a lot of times in the community of looking at histamine or inflammation as a bucket. That term is a little bit still controversial. Yeah, misleading. Misleading because it's not exactly the way it works as we know it right now and is still emerging in science. So the way to look at it is really like, okay, if I'm pumping my body full of things that have histamine, like I'm stinging myself, I'm in an environment that's moldy, which we'll talk about, yeah, or there's a, a lot of chocolate, pollen, yeah, eating a bunch of chocolate, pollen, you, are, yeah. you are pumping your body full of histamine more so that you might have, more so than you might actually have the enzyme to break it down, right? So you're in excess, which is why you might be developing symptoms and it could be like a dangerous place that you're entering. So again, it's like best to kind of work with a doctor and a dietitian during this time because they will truly know whether again, you might have to add in some supplements or yeah. how to really manage this whole situation based on how advanced your MCAS is. Yeah, you know, is it just that it's a, little diet shift um, or is it you know that you need additional supplementation to help with that and I definitely noticed that um, when I was getting blood work done and we were talking about this a lot because we didn't even think about like as people who never had allergies in the spring which like yeah. man I am so grateful for now I'm like gosh like allergies are rough and we were getting like that scratchy throat feeling after going out walking dogs, like all of that stuff. Yeah. And we're like, what is going on? We are eating so cleanly. Mm -hmm. um, and we're realizing that, you know, the pollen was playing a huge role in what our current histamine loads were. And so when I was looking into supplementation, you know, as Siri mentioned, DAO is a supplement that you can get. Um, but I was also looking at another one that you might have seen or might know of called quercetin. And that is basically a mast cell stabilizer. And while a lot of people t who are doing BVT um, do take quercetin, basically like we've seen research um, that it can get in the way of the B venom process and so and yeah just to just to add to that why it could get mm -hmm. in the way is because based on this research on b venom for lyme by puncturing these these irregular cells mm -hmm. and kind of stabilizing your mast cells and getting rid of the really rogue ones b venom is working by modulating your immune yes. system and bringing it to a balance and Things like quercetin and even low dose naltrexone are also kind of working in a similar way of like stabilizing. And that stability is like kind of the same sort of idea that B venom is is working towards as well. Mm -hmm. And so kind of it's kind of like too many cooks in the kitchen type thing. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, and so instead, you know, I definitely decided to supplement with DAO. And that is really just because as Siri explained, like it is, you have natural DAO levels, whatever they are for you. And what this does is supplement your natural production. And so that really helps break down this excess histamine instead of as Siri said, you know, just getting like way too involved and in trying to do too many other things, which is more so what we've seen quercetin doing so yeah again, like even with me it's like if i'm yeah. gonna take like um dao it's only at a time where i unavoidably like might have to eat something that has mm -hmm. like a higher histamine amount like yeah if i'm reintroducing if something? i'm reintroducing yeah. or suppose i'm traveling somewhere yeah. and like i'm on the road i'm like driving and i like forgot to pack a meal and i found some place that was celiac friendly but mm -hmm. i just like don't have you know i can't find something that's low histamine then i'll like take it 
And, you know, it's yeah. kind of like something that, you know, again, you want to work under the supervision of a doctor with because yeah. you don't want to add too many things or take too many yeah, things. it's not like a daily, at least, you know, like, it's again, figuring for out with us, your yeah. doctor if it needs to be a daily thing. But yeah. like, yeah, for both of us, it's, you know, I take it for, if I really am in excess, like take it for a set amount of time and then before like a histamine heavier meal, yeah, whatever it is. But it's just another great supplement. Um, just to think about with histamine to just kind of keep in your back pocket, so to speak. But again, work with your medical practitioner and see what they suggest and again, what your blood work is suggesting. Also, it's like we have um, kind of learned this on our own and kind of as we move towards kind of owning our own food journey, but there are a lot of natural sources that you can get with diamine yes, oxidase, I was gonna say that, which are yeah. amazing and wonderful. And I mean, one for me is pea shoots. Mm-hmm. Um, you can find them usually at your local farmer's markets. You can make like a pesto with them. You can just like flash fry them and they taste really yummy. Another one that really resonates with me because I'm of Indian descent um, is South Indian is um, mung beans. Um, you can soak them and it's been shown that soaking mung beans for three days actually in, actually gives them as much DAO as pea shoots, if not more. So mung beans are also, you know, yeah. they can be a little bit controversial because of the whole legume sort of situation, but they can actually be very pro DAO mm-hmm. if you are at yeah. that point in your you journey where you can introduce them. Those are great and we can link... Um, a resource down below that has like a whole list of ones that we've introduced and ones that you might be taking already. And we just kind of wanted to walk through mm-hmm. from beginning to end kind of the whole mast cell dysfunction to how that kind of creates a lot of excess in your of histamine in your body and then how that might affect your diet. Yeah, and that diet being, you know, a low histamine diet, there are so many diets out there, right? Like, you know, it's the, every day it feels like somebody's talking about some new diet and obviously there's like paleo and keto and, um, you know, low histamine, AIP, all these different things. And there are a lot of overlaps, of course, with a lot of them, but the diet that we, you know, based off everything we just said as well, like that we have found to be the one we identify most with is a low histamine diet. Yeah. And it does overlap, you know, with like the anti-inflammatory um, paleo and protocol and all of that stuff. But, um, really it's just being mindful of your histamine level, you know, it's keeping a really great amount of leafy greens, you know, veggies in your life. Great resources, Mast Cell 360. It's run by a physician and she really talks about, she's like a mast cell expert and she really talks about what can and can't be had in ways that are like really easily understood. Like she gives you like an actual grocery Mm -hmm. list and that was like a really great resource that we found. Yeah, we can link that as well. So again, to spare the time of us just like, you know, share, like talking about all these things. Like, I think a lot of this is just helpful for us to link out so you can see like everything in its entirety. Yeah. Um, so we don't have to tell you your whole, you know, grocery list (laughs) right now, but, um, yeah. So look out for our next video in the series. Yep. Thanks.